Act Two. We've mentioned it a few times already. An American Werewolf in London from 1981, starring David Naughton and directed by John Landis. Of all people, John Landis, man who made Animal House. Yep. Fun I fact. mean, it has it has its Animal House ish moments. It so, is, it's, so, it's, it's, it's as much a comedy as it is a scary movie, but opening thoughts on this movie. I know your problems with this movie, and I agreed with you earlier when we were talking, but having sat through the whole thing and let have it, had it digest, I'm no, I don't have as much issue with the length as you did. Uh, you, I you felt said you like could yeah, cut 40 minutes off of it. And uh, maybe maybe it movie. not 40, but like <laughs> a good 20 or 30 minutes. Like, But the reason why I don't think there was that's some the drag. Case is, and I was thinking that there's a couple of scenes I would definitely cut down, but there's only really like two or three scenes, and it would probably amount to like five minutes. But I think even moving that five minutes would have made a nice, tighter movie. But here's the thing so this movie is like The Wolfman meets. Metamorphosis, the book by Franz Kafka, where it's all just this like slow psychological explanation of this person's body horror and transformation as it, they're slowly turning into a bug. And that's what this is. Like it takes an hour for but the main character to turn into a werewolf. And that seemed like yeah. a long time. But they did. The they don't really waste is, that time. No, yeah, the payoff it's, to, it's, to what that has is good. Because it's exploring, like the metamorphosis does. What's the psychological psychology of this guy gonna be like when he thinks, assumes, is pretty sure that he's gonna turn into a werewolf in three days when there's a full moon. <laughs> and, and and he's just like for a while there. They're just there's just a scene of him being bored. He's just like. And that's a long scene, too. There's like a five-minute montage of him just being bored in the apartment. But that's pretty hilarious. And the thing I do like about these down, long moments in this movie is it does make the scary moments that much scarier. And I think that's something that modern horror... I know you're not a big horror guy, but I find modern... I, there hasn't been a scary horror movie made in like 30 years because they are all so fast-paced. There's no time to feel any fear. The fear you feel from a movie is like, the build up. For example, in this movie, the scene, the chase scene in the subway, that was terrifying. I was so nervous with that guy running from this werewolf because you know he's going to get caught, but you can't, you don't see the werewolf and you hear him running and breathing and he keeps looking behind himself as he turns a corner and you're like, oh my God, is the wolf going to immediately turn the corner? And it, that was tense. And you don't get scenes like that anymore. But that's me jumping ahead. Uh, do we have a trailer? Way ahead. Yeah, I believe we do. I had a long opening thesis for this one, and I got a lot more to say about this movie. Uh, all right, kind all of right. long winded on this Well, one. I mean, if we really wanted to, like, you know, show people the movie, we could just play the old trailer, the original two and a half minute trailer no. that we showed at the end, uh, which Go basically had episode. all of the scenes from the movie, uh, yeah. in my opinion. But uh, I found us a nice little condensed 27 second version that. Uh, well, first, right before you press it, let me just uh, throw up the poster. Here's the original poster. The American Werewolf in London. Monster movie. The monster movie. I never noticed it said oh, that. <laughs> it's interesting. The it's like monster a movie, movie podcast. It's the monster movie. All right. Well. From the director's of Animal House, which got a lot of people. Okay, just one thing. <laughs> During a preview of the film, the Marquis saw, uh, said, from the director of National Lampoon's Animal House, because of this, many people in the audience thought they were going to see a comedy. Reportedly, people ran out of the theater when they discovered it was a horror film because they were frightened. Well, one of my all-time favorite movies is the John Landis movie, and that's The Blues Brothers. So he definitely oh, does go. Yeah. Mm, yeah, like it's that's why I was like, oh wait, Landis made this film? I couldn't believe it. And it's like his proudest film, apparently. This film. Excuse me. I make it American man stole my balloon. I'm a werewolf. <laughs> Dang, 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 dang,
an American werewolf in London. Something different. Naked American man stole my balloon. That's a hilarious Naked scene. American like he's hiding in the bushes. That is. It's like, kid, he's come over like, here. He's like, hey, little boy. It's like, no. He's like, come over here for a, a pound. I'll give you a pound. I'll give you a it's pound. Like, no. It's like, oh, I'll give you two pounds. pounds. He's like, all right. <laughs> the kid walks over. And he's like, who are you? He's just like, oh, I'm the famous balloon thief. How are you going to steal a balloon? Well, let me show you. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> See, this movie is a comedy. This movie is still a comedy. It was. It was there was a lot of comedy elements in this film. Like, it was from pretty much from the beginning, uh, honestly, which was like, okay, like, like it's such a... It's such a weird combination of films. It is pretty much on those John Landis 80s comedy, buddy comedy. Um, and then it just goes into like a whole realm of like body horror that yeah. was not seen at the time. No. Ever. Or since. Or and, since. And, and shocked many, many, many people. Fun fact, Dave not uncomfortable character... to watch. Dude, the, actually, the yeah. Like I make you incredibly uncomfortable. I I I I never actually watched that transformation, like the whole scene well, from beginning one to second. end before. I've seen clips. Let's let's just listen to it for a second. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's, he's not having a great time. Well, like, I, the only thing I could imagine it equating to is, like, do you remember being, like, you know, 13, 14, maybe, maybe even 10 or 11, probably even younger, but that, like, that puberty stage when you just get growing pains in your knees? No, sure. Yeah, you remember that, like, classic feeling? Uh, I, 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 Imagine he was having something like that, but turned up to about 50. And every and it was through his, in his entire body. And he's just like, like, like well, we're, we're jumping ahead. So let's rewind back to the beginning of this movie for a second. Because for one thing, the opening's too long. They just play Bad Moon Rising and they play the whole song, obviously. So here's the thing. There's, a, there's all the scenes that are too long in this movie are scenes... When you could tell John Landis, because he's a music guy too, like he did Blues Brothers and whatnot, just clearly wanted to highlight these songs. They all have to do with the moon. But yeah, yeah. Each, every it, time it, they it, do one of those moon songs in a scene, it always plays until at least the first guitar solo or solo, whatever instrument it is. And like you can tell, like those scenes are all just running long to get to that point. Like, oh my God, I get it. The song's longer than this, but you don't need this scene anymore. So he, he was trying to get the song snippet. Blue Moon uh, in this film, and he it couldn't was get it. Was but it wasn't like he was trying to get certain versions of it. Uh, one like by Elvis Presley, he couldn't get it because Elvis no, Presley wasn't, wasn't a too. big like scandal. Uh, he wanted two other versions of Blue Moon uh, that were like very popular at the time, but nobody Moon was like willing to sign it. off. Yeah. Moon dance, bad moon rising. Yeah, but those music scenes were the the long ones for me. You just kind of cut those out or make them a lot shorter. Yeah, really like easy. the the whole like the going to the slaughtered lamb and stuff like that. Like okay, that yeah, was, you know. I liked you know. this scene a lot. I liked the slaughtered lamb stuff. They yeah. The, I, fire, the slaughtered lamb. These guys are looking at them funny here. Yeah. Very unhospitable people. They're just like, yeah. ah, he's ruining our jabber, our rabble oh, yeah, rabble. He makes the one guy miss the dartboard for like the first time ever. He's like, oh, I never miss like Bullseye from that Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. He's like, oh, I never miss. It made me miss. <laughs> it's Bullseye's drunk uncle that beat him into this yeah. mission of being so good. You know what? I like that. That's going into the head cannon. So. <laughs> They're at the slaughtered lamb, and they're just like they say this more than once in this movie. It's like we know we don't, there's no food here because they yeah, go no get food, eat. no drink, there's no food. Yeah, you, you just drink. You can get drunk there, but you can they will not feed you even a peanut. Yeah, best he gets a tea. You gotta yeah. make me make a tea, aren't you? Yeah. So, yeah, the slaughtered lamb. They're all in there. You look like to me, the townspeople are all holed up in there to try to stay safe in numbers 
because they know there's werewolves going to be running around that night. And yeah. then that they're holed up like, and then they let the basically run the two out of there because the dart guy wants to beat up uh, Jack. Um, yeah, so it's they, funny they the first mugglers. the first scene you just see the sheep truck and then the farmer opens the back of the sheep truck and they Jack and uh, God what's his name the main uh, character Dave David Dave yes David yeah they're, they're just there <laughs> Jack <laughs> and David yeah so so they, they get the, and, and apparently Jack's like hello sheep or something like that yeah so there's a lot it's of like I'll miss you lines. like will you miss me it's like will you miss yeah. yeah, I'll miss you. Yeah, so so yeah, yeah, there's a lot. That guy improvised a lot of his lines in this film. He's good in this. They both. Yeah, are. he's really but, good. Yeah, but especially the the friend Jack. Apparently, so, apparently, this was originally wrote for Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray. My God, that blew my mind. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Dan Aykroyd's the main guy. He would have been David, yeah, and Bill Murray would have been the dead guy, like I'm clearly. Gl I'm glad it wasn't those two. I mean, yeah, we would have seen to a degree. Dan Bill Aykroyd. Murray just plays Bill Murray in everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. This movie wouldn't be better with that character. No, nope, they decided to go with uh, I'm a pep, I'm a Doctor Pep Pepper, David Naughton. He he was most famous. For working the Dr. Pepper commercials back in the day. Yeah, it would have gone full comedy too if those two were there. The the funny thing is, Dr. Pepper let him go after this movie came out. Because of it? Just like, yeah, because of this movie, because of the nudity in this because oh, yeah. of well, nudity he's, in the movie. He's naked a few times. And that's another thing. So they in other movies you see with werewolves and stuff, they they always find them naked and you're like, oh, it must be because of the Hulk. They get bigger and their clothes rip off. But in this movie, they actually create a reason for it. Where during the transformation, you know, all that crazy stuff going on with his body, he just starts burning up. He's probably got like a hundred and eight degree fever. You know, you're turning yeah. into a werewolf. So he just strips off all his clothes. It didn't rip off, or does he rip yeah. it off? He does rip off. No, his no. Shirt. Like, ah! well, yeah, he pops the shirt off, and yeah. then he like struggles with the pants and gets them yeah. off, and then he just. But anyway, yeah. so we're, again, we're jumping ahead. So the first scary scene of this movie, it opens up with quite a bit of humor and stuff at the bar, but the bar is creepy. And then they leave, and the lady behind the bar is like, yikes, like, we really shouldn't have done that. we got to go get them you, around the back You end. can't let them out. You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, well, we didn't tell them to come here, and we didn't want them here, so it's fine. She's like, it's basically murder. He, they're just like, well, and then it's murder then. <laughs> but... Then they start hearing yeah. howling. So this is the first scary scene. They're walking just down this dirt road. They end up going. They're crossing the moors. It's in the moors in England. And they just end up in a field. They end up wandering off the road, which the lady said, just stick to the road. If you're going to leave, stick to the road. And, you know, don't fuss about. Get there fast. Wherever you're going. But they do. They lose track of the road. And they eventually realize that they're like, crap, we're actually lost when they start hear hearing the howling. They're like, what do you think it is, a coyote? And but he's like, there's no coyotes in England, man. Like, <laughs> they're like, we'll be fine as long as we stay on the ro ro yeah. road. Oh yeah, crap. Oh, Where's no. that road? And yeah. Like, oh, we'll just turn back and go back to find the road. They still don't find the road. Yeah, let's just go back to the slaughter slaughtered slam or sl slaughtered, slaughtered lamb. Yeah, that sounds like, like a great. They were never like, gonna no. find the slaughtered lamb. <laughs> they were no. so lost. Let's just <laughs> casually walk away from you know potentially being hunted by like a werewolf. Yeah. yeah, so they just think it's a dog or something, and then they even see it. They're like, "Oh, it must be like an angry sheep dog." And then they so they it's just an angry run. dog. All right, but then, uh, yep, it attacks Jack, rips him up real good. Hold on, well, I yeah, because they they were they were play. running, and David slips and scares yeah. the shit out of Jack, and then Jack yeah. turns around to pick him up, and the werewolf is like, ah, yeah. and fucking tears him to shreds. It's a pentangle, a five pointed star. It's used in witchcraft. Lon Chaney Jr. and Universal Studios maintain that's the mark of the Wolfman. Oh, I see. There you have it, the direct reference to the Wolfman. So, you know, there's definitely a lot taken from this movie and a lot of inspiration they found. I, um, I, the one thing I, I find funny is uh, nobody seems to know what a pentagram is in these movies. Pentangles. Like, pentangles? Is that, pe what? Pentangles? That's what he is called it a called? pentangle. 
Oh, good lord. I didn't notice that. Yeah, no. It's a pentangle, he says. But anyway, so here's where we were. That's that's why that scene's really scary to me. From first, like the thing stalking them, and then they, they realize it's like circling them. But that was horrific. Like it's always scary in a movie where somebody has the time and has to have the thought process of, oh, it's killing me. Like that's mm. always scary in a movie. It's oh yeah, killing, he's calling out for it's like, like it's already you're, well, you're already saying it's too late. Yeah. But you you still have to. Oh, it's a scary like mental state to have to be in. And yeah, no, it's that's definitely a, no fun. That's a scary scene. And then you know he's just like he's running away. He's like a super coward, David. <laughs> he just like runs. He's like books it, and then he's like, no, 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 I got to turn back and save my friend. And he said it's killing him. Yeah. And well, the shock sort of like snaps, and he's like, oh wait, yeah. Jack, and he goes back, and he's just yeah. like mince meat, mangled the up, and then. He gets bit himself and pounced upon by the werewolf. And then all of a sudden, you hear a couple shots. In the townspeople did the right thing after all. A little too late for poor Jack and really too late for Dave. But uh, they save him. And that Im immediately, they like put probably a couple rounds into, of a shotgun into that werewolf. And it's immediately a human again. You look down the ground and it's just this naked guy with bullet holes. See, I don't think I was totally paying attention, so I must have missed that bit. Yeah, well, David yeah, they said, over, and he's just like, you see the naked guy there. And that's why they're, the cops and the townspeople are like, no, he was, the boys were attacked by a crazy guy. A crazy, okay, okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Because they have the crazy guy. The body's right there, so. No, the, yeah. those townspeople. And the townspeople are, are going to, like, admit that they got werewolves. Yeah, the townspeople no, are going to exactly. admit that they're like, oh, we've got but why? Why werewolf so rituals. Yeah, it's... Like, it, it other than people think they're so... crazy. Because you won't have proof unless you get killed by one. Because <laughs> you I can't mean, kill I it and then so. kill somebody, it reverts back to a human. So it is a it, hard thing to prove. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, like, they they had weird... It's like, they had weird motivations a little bit you know um well and i wonder too do they know who the t particular townspeople are who do turn into werewolves like they know there's werewolves in their town and they know the people in the bar aren't werewolves so do they know who the people in the town are who are werewolves and why don't they just do yeah. something about them like there's there's a little bit of faulty logic in this town but it's a creepy enough town that you don't really think about it a whole lot because you just think everyone's super weird and mm. you know traumatized by this because they all look traumatized they're scared shitless in the bar like they hear the werewolves and the lady behind the bars is like you hear that you guys hear that right they're all like nope didn't hear anything and then you hear the howl again and the other guy's just like yep don't hear a thing <laughs> yeah. just gonna ignore this let these yeah. americans die yep so you know you got half their wish and so then uh, David wakes up in the hospital with his nice with his night nurse. Miss Price. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Who is a little too she must like the bad boy or something because she's super infatuated with him. Again, that I animal don't... magnetism that uh her, her I mean, motivations okay. don't make sense. Let's talk we can talk about her. No, okay. So her motivations kind of like makes some sense in the sense that she seems like the only health practitioner in all of England that actually wants to care to do their job. Like she legitimately is the only ones like, I'm going to make you take this medicine. She's a bit forceful. She's a, yeah. you know, you know, she's, she's a, um, yeah. you think you're going to make me eat my food too. She's just like, are you going to make me make you eat your food? And she's, she's good at that. <laughs> It's just funny, um, the doctor even says to the other nurse, he looks at her and he's just like, do you have a function in this hospital? Yeah. She's, yeah, she's, she's like, yeah. She's, she's like, well, she's don't do creepy. it. She's creepy. She's <laughs> creepy. She took a peek at the guy's junk. She's like, oh, she I did. took she's a like, lock. I think he's a yeah. Jew. She's like, why do you say that? It's like, I had a peek. Oh, which was a funny... She's like, well, that's funny... common practice now, actually. The doctor's like, yep, it is. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like the entire healthcare system in England is like 
real terrible, apparently. It's, in yeah, the 70s, Miss maybe. Price, I think it's pretty good now. Yeah, uh, so Miss Price, you know, she's she yes. seems like a smart, capable um, nurse yep. until she, you know, starts falling for that American D in David. And uh, now, granted, there's a million cases of this very thing in World War II, in other wars where the nurse, you know, nurses a guy back to health, they end up getting married and that type of thing. There's definitely tons of cases of this very thing happening. But I don't know. There's just something about their relate these two. It's not particularly believable for me. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I kind of feel like it's David's part. Like he's mm. he's not a, the best actor. No, she's quite good actually. <laughs> she's great. Yeah, she's yeah. she she's very good. Yeah, I agree. And I, you know, David, the actor here was. I think his name might even be David. David Naughton. Um. He didn't get a lot of roles after this. Certainly not. No, yeah, not he starring didn't. ones like this. No, no, he he basically he was, as well. he was like he was well he was he was getting typecasted into horror films and he didn't want to do any yeah. horror films because he, he was like he, I don't want to be a part of the five to six hour makeup process ever again. Mm-hmm. Like he when when he signed on to the film they they shot the film sequentially. Right. So it all started roses and easy peasy. And he thought, oh, this isn't so bad until they had to do the body transformation scene. And that's when he started spending like five to six hours in makeup chairs and then additional like 10 hours and like set holes and stuff like that. And it was like, you know, he yeah. it, it was it was a point where the uh, the makeup artist was like, I feel sorry for you. Congrats on getting the role. <laughs> there's, there's many a Star Trek actor with similar horror stories. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, well, let's get, we'll talk about that scene in one second, actually. So, yeah, in, in the hospital, David gets a visit from a, a good buddy. Can I have a piece of toast? Get the fuck out of here, Jack. <laughs> this buddy just shows up. Can I have a piece of toast? Get the fuck out of here, Jack! Because he's dead. Yeah. He's like, you're supposed to be yeah. dead and everything, dude. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I look, I had to come here. Okay, I gotta tell you, you're a vamp or a werewolf, and you're gonna have to. I'm kill undead. Him. He's like, you have to end the line. Every last werewolf has to go. That means you, buddy. So this whole movie is just his buddy trying to tell him to off himself. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know his buddy is left in an undead like limbo oh, yeah. because he, he because he died from the bloodline of the werewolf, and he's like, yeah. the only reason uh, I'm alive right now is because I died from a werewolf. And the only way I can actually die is if you, the bloodline dies. You have to die, David. You have to free me. But that's a new becomes... piece of lore they seem to put in. Uh, yeah, I think so. I I, honestly, I don't think I've ever, yeah, I don't think I've heard of that lore in any other werewolf films. But it's interesting because it gives us Jack here and other victims later on. But look at that practical effects here on, on Jack. Dude, the practical effects were great, but you know what bugged me about that practical effect in that scene? Mm. Pull up that image. Why is it not working? Okay, my computer's squirreling out. Can we get to this? Does this one work? Okay, hold on one second. I... Oh my god, why am my stuff not working? I might have to go out and come back in here. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll pull out. Oh, here we go. I think I got... yeah. Oh, you got it? I... Yeah, I did that. So, okay, okay. so this, this picture of, of Jack here... Mm. Uh, if you notice here in his trachea is just like ripped wide open. Oh yeah. Right. Um, and he's talking absolutely normally, like nothing's wrong with it. Oh, and I'm by myself all of a sudden. Okay, cool. So yeah. So Jack is, uh, basically lamenting to David about how he's stuck in this undead world and he needs to get back into, to, you know, being a dead man. So, He's trying to convince David to kill himself, um, which okay. leads to David starting to have a panic freak out and call the nurse. And he's like, nurse, nurse. Yeah. All right. Let's see if my things work now. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. 
All right. Can you, can you, does this work? Yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah, that's working. All right. All right. Okay, so there we are. So David eventually gets out of the hospital. Well, I think he might shack up with the nurse once or twice first. Well, no, he, he doesn't through. eventually get out of the hospital, per se. We're, we're skipping a okay. few beats here. Okay, uh, so there's... he does leave the hospital every now and then to run through the woods and eat deer. Or well, that's that the thing. I, that, that's <laughs> he's never hungry. Head. But he's, he always says he's never hungry. See, I thought it was in his head, too, but he, they try to feed him a bunch of times, in this. He's just, but he's never hungry. Because he's always have just... I mean, how the hell of the fuck deer. is he escaping? But no, how is he escaping a hospital and nobody's noticing and he's coming back? And, I assume he's like, doing it even, at night. No, I, I. it's not. It's They're all dreams. Because the, any other time he transforms, he wakes up in some random ass spot. Yeah, okay. Right? But he's never so hungry. He's, that just well, adds to I mean, the mystery, I guess. Because this movie does better than the last movie the whole just because he's never system. hungry is doesn't mean like he was out eating things like you can you can easily like trick your mind and thinking yeah, you're not yeah. hungry because especially if you just had a dream even. yeah, yeah but... especially if you're having dreams or jumping and eating deer apparently um for whatever reason john landis wanted to film film the movie during shitty weather times and uh, so they filmed it's it England. in like early sp- in, in in England, but they filmed it during the spring months, so like March to May, basically. And um, there were some scenes where David had to like run through the woods of England that were just like treacherous and woody and shit like that, yeah. cold and wet, Slick, wet and like yeah. yeah and, and and he had to make it, and they were just like, it's warm, David, it's warm, make it seem like it's warm, and he just had to like frolic through the woods, pretending it was like a warm spring day, yeah. you know. So he had a bad acting experience on this one, is what you're saying. Yeah, he didn't have the greatest acting experience, and then unfortunately, well, look, John Landis kind of is one of the reading. guys that has had some unfortunate happenings of his filming methods so mm. yeah um so let's skip ahead a little and we have a yeah, david uh, well no let me just carry this before i skip carry ahead this for a sec. I, yep no carry problem. this for a minute i'm gonna go for a quick one i'll be back okay so here's the thing about this movie and it exploring the pre-psychosis uh, the mindset of someone who's going to turn into a werewolf. Um, where did Murphy go? <laughs> what a time. Anyway, so we're going to get to the transformation here, and it is gruesome. It starts with the hand, and that hand effect. You even see, see all these things. They're not like stop, put the prosthetic on, start again. I mean, maybe it's a stop motion effect, but everything grows. The things on his face, you see it all grow, pulsating. It's horrible. He's screaming the whole time. It's like the metamorphosis by Franz Kafka condensed into a 45 second scene. Jeez, might even be longer than that. This this scene feels like five minutes. It's so uncomfortable. See here. So here we have him here. A little more. Oh, yeah. We go, we get the hands, get the hairy back. Look at that face. See that face? You see it. It just pops out from his human face. This is the craziest transformation scene. There hasn't been one this good since, I dare say. And there he is, some more, all agony on his face. So he's not a terrible actor, actually, because we we maybe don't give him enough credit here, Murphy. Can you hear me? Because uh, the, cause, cause the way he acts this transformation scene, he's actually a pretty solid. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is this is the best scene in the movie. Like I remember um I remember back when we were making the the you know, our little people versus Christ thing back in the day. Oh, yes. uh, friend yeah, yeah. of the show, friend of the show, Mark DeVoe of Mark mm-hmm. DeVoe mm-hmm. special effects. Who you can hear an interview in. with over on the Graphic Histories podcast. Oh, also in the you US. Got oh, yeah, there's oh you that's a great episode. Go listen to the Mark episode. Oh mm. damn. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh yeah, Mark uh says this is he loves werewolves. His dream is to make a werewolf. And that's because of this movie. He loves this movie. He 
uh, expressed to me that why this was like his favorite scene because it was like all practical and everything and, and terrifying like, sweet, sweet, I can't. and Funny terrifying yeah and, and uncomfortable i was just uh, talking about that with our dear listeners while you were off doing whatever you were doing but <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we just went through the transformation and it's horrible and uncomfortable yeah, no, just it just like the fact that it happens so slowly and like bit mm -hmm. by bit and you can like see and like it's so elongated like a lot of the setup to this one scene is well worth it. And then this is clearly where they spent all their budget. Like this is hands down the best werewolf transformation scene in all of film history. You know, uh, the it's fact a, that's a reason it won an Academy Award oh, in yeah. 1981, the first special effects Academy Award ever. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Well, look, when you get goes full, we'll skip ahead for a second here. When it goes full werewolf, that's also terrifying and looks great. <clears throat> so the fun fact about that is they were trying to, they couldn't quite get it done with a full animatronic. And mm. it wasn't quite working with a guy in a puppet suit. Mm. And John Landis had said, uh, he was like, he was like, it just kind of came to me. Uh, what if I just put a piece of wood on a wheelbarrow and then just laid on the wheelbarrow and did this with the front paws and then you can have somebody like move it behind and fucking then it's moving through like shots and you don't have to shoot a full thing. Mm -hmm. He's like, he couldn't show as much of the werewolf as he wanted because of practicality and budget reasons. So he's just like, I'm just going to lean a lot of what the actual werewolf looks like into people's mindsets and stuff like that, which is why... The majority of that subway chase is like from the werewolf point of view which you know is like that sam raimi like running through the woods camera shot um the one thing i'll say about this movie me of. too is it's not predictable like when this transformation scene happening it's happening in his girlfriend's apartment mm. so you sort of assume right as it's happening she's gonna come home and he's going to kill her or not, but there's going to be a confrontation between the two of them or something. And that doesn't happen. Yeah, I I was kind of expecting it more to be like he transforms and then he breaks out. And which because he did of the do. trailer, which he did do, but he breaks out. It's more like into the public and it's like causing the scenes that he's like. You see that the trailer, happens later. The car accidents. Yeah, which happens way later. And, and, and it's, it's basically around it works the end better of the later. It, it does. Yeah, see, it, I love, does. actually love the buildup of this movie, and it took me like it had it had a weird three quarters pacing. of the way to appreciate the pacing, but it yeah, it's all very deliberate. I think, other than those few music kind of montages that I mentioned, that just went on a bit too long. Yeah, it all the pauses and the slow burn of this movie makes all the the pointed scenes. Like the transformation and the the chase scene and all these and the chaos scene later, it makes it all stand out so much more. Like, and that's I what think it, it has so much time to breathe. Out, well, the other thing that stands out about the film, uh, and just like, um, it's you don't expectedness is like some of the dream sequences, like we talked about earlier. How he's like running. Oh, they're the crazy. The, the, the dreams the within a dream. Like having a, yeah, but did do, do, do you do you like? The one where he's like, oh, I'm just going to have a nice dinner with my family. All of a sudden, Nazi werewolves are burning the house down and killing the kids and the wife and slitting my throat. Which he wakes up and he's like, nurse, nurse, come help me. And she comes over and she's like, I'll just let some light in. Another Nazi werewolf stabs her. That's the dream within a dream. The Nazi werewolves are pretty I... funny, actually. <laughs> uh, so, fun fact. Uh, in order to get the movie down to an R rating. Down to an R Land rating. Yeah. Wow. Landis had to tone down the sex scene and cut out a part where a piece of toast fell out of Jack's undead throat. He also oh, edited out a wow. scene where the werewolf kills three gruesome. homeless men after preview audiences freaked out. He later had regrets about the edits. You see those dead men later. They talk yeah. to him. Um, interesting. I mean, well, look, if he wanted it to not be an R rating or higher, he didn't have to have the final scene happen in the middle of a porn movie at a porn theater. So, fuck. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? Uh, he never intentioned it to be a porn theater. 
In oh, fact, really? the original yeah, the original portion of the script was it was just in a regular theater where a cartoon was happening, but due to the time and era, uh, a lot of the like theaters at the time had been converted into porn movie theaters. So he just changed it just, in the script that it was going to be a porn movie theater, <laughs> which was pretty funny because Buddy <laughs> doesn't know that. Go, I mean, we'll get to that scene in a minute. So Buddy runs loose. He has himself a rampage. Um, he, there's a, a great chase scene. It's, 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 I found it very tense and buddy makes it all the way to the escalator and then he trips on the escalator. I, just... okay. I loved that shot in that movie. Where it's that getting was closer probably to him. my favorite shot. Yeah, where it's like he's on the, the elevator and it's them. above, above. Yeah, it's up above him and it just like comes in top frame, but like it's it's framed within a frame. So as he's coming in from the lower end of the subway, and you just see like it like crawling towards him, and it looks big as fuck too. It's super quick, uh, cut but to it's a line. far away. Yeah, it's super quick <sighs> cut to a line. Yeah. Which yeah, worked. it was Actually it was worked. it it was well done. Yeah, but the best the best thing about that chase scene is you never see the werewolf while it's chasing him. But every time they keep cutting to the shot, that's the first person perspective of the werewolf, and that first person perspective keeps getting closer to the guy. So the way they did that, that's what made it super tense. I don't know why more scenes aren't filmed like that. I guess maybe because it would be like a direct ripoff or something. But just have that. First person perspective. I mean, of, I mean, it went, the, it went, went on threat. a bit, bit long. It went on a bit. Oh, long. I, I like, hate it that. Could scene probably could have been right shaved that. a bit. Could oh, have been shaved off. Bit. Anything about that? A modern movie would have shaved that off, and it would have been a detriment, I think. Um, so there's that. He, he's starting to figure out what's going on. Well, he knows because he keeps talking to his dead buddy. Here's his dead buddy again. And the craziest thing: every time Jack comes to him again. He's more rotted and decomposed because he's dead. And by the end, he's just like a skeleton, practically. I thought that was a cool um, effect. Like, there's a lot of smart stuff in this movie. I forget his name. Um, Jack. Jack's character, like the guy who played Jack. Oh. Uh, his name was Griffin Dunn, yeah. So Griffin's Dunn, uh, apparently, it was like... Um, apprehensive about showing the film to his mother because of the fact that his body slowly decays and i guess yeah. she was just getting over a sickness or something and oh, apparently really. she eventually did see it and it, it just like shocked the hell out of her she's just like she couldn't handle it apparently this movie like surprised and terrified and just like scarred a lot of people at, at, you at know honestly it did it to me and i had seen it years ago i had seen this movie once before but I don't know if it was just the invincibility of youth or what, but a lot of this stuff didn't affect me nearly as much as it did this time, like the body horror. Maybe it's because as you get old, your body starts to fail. You're like, oh my God, body horror is actually terrifying. But uh, yeah, so Jack, you know, lures him into a porn theater <laughs> because he just like waves from across yeah. the street and he's like come meet me in here and buddy just runs in he's like give me a ticket please not even noticing well yeah david's kind of movie basically it's freaking be. out at this point because he's well yeah. he what happens has he murdered wa he people. wakes well he wakes up in the wakes zoo up, he wakes in up the in the zoo and he's he's facing other werewolves or other wolves i should say mm. uh naked as a jaybird and climbs oh, yeah. out of it and basically all scared up in front too like he's got a big Cut and scar here. And yeah, he's had the it's, 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 he's got the scars and stuff on his face. He had that from the first werewolf attack. There's the scars on his face oh, and his chest. Okay. Those were the cuts from the first werewolf attack that never healed. Okay, uh, or it doesn't you know, heal like Larry scars. Talbot. So there's another difference yeah. there. And they yeah. also make a joke uh, about silver. They're like, you're gonna need silver bullets to kill him because they're talking about how he should kill himself, and he's just like, Well, yeah, I need silver like, bullets. Try, and they, just, to... they scoff like, at him, come on, man. Like, they, <laughs> this is like, this is um, a children's story. So, <laughs> so while he, while, while David is off, you know, murdering multiple people throughout the night, the doctor decides to take a, a road trip to the old pub because he wants to like check out if Buddy's story is true. 
And uh, while he's doing that, you know, uh, Nurse I Price like that scene like actually with him and the guy to figure in, the, out. in the chest. Yeah, game. yeah. He's like, yeah, care for he's, a game? Or... He's just like, no thanks. But in the dog's just like, oh, surely you don't find me that impressive. It's like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. But he's just like, no, yeah, I just don't want to play with very you. Very doctory. <laughs> not getting social cues that guy yeah, just, um, no, no. but yeah eventually like goes outside and gets the, the and like, that's where the food thing from... it, it, again is he's just like well since yeah. I'm here I might as well get something to eat there's like there's no food here yeah <laughs> it really should make that a sign <laughs> they're like yeah, we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the slaughtered lamb pub but we don't serve lamb <laughs> or anything <laughs> yeah, just just Guinness if you're lucky. You, you can just come in here and stop yourself from being slaughtered like a lamb. But uh, it's just more of a fight. Um, so yeah, they're basically they're they're kind of looking for David. Um, and then yeah. David, after waking up, goes back to the apartment where Gwen's like, oh, "You're back!" And then immediately, like she's you know they're about to the fuck right there and then because you know she's like oh it's fine he's just acting like him silly self and the doctor's like get to me now you're in grave mm -hmm. danger you know because he knows what's up now he knows that it's all sort of life. he's still doing the same thing as the doctor in the wolfman where he's just like no it's all just a matter of his psychosis he's not turning into a werewolf he's just acting like a werewolf so we have to get to yeah, yeah. Like, so, so i mean again it's hard yeah, thing to at prove at this point they they're on their way and then david finds out about the murders from last night and he was in disbelief until he hears that news and then he goes spiraling out and runs away he tries to get arrested when, tries to get arrested but doesn't and that's a like, hilarious scene by the way do i have a clip from that one i'm like oh yeah Come on, I want you to arrest me, you asshole! It's not so cool for that kind of language. <laughs> they just didn't want to do anything but Ooh. arrest him. He's just like, Queen Elizabeth's yeah. a man! Winston Churchill's full of shit! <laughs> People are just like, no, calm down now, young man. Like, <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. You can say these things, but they're very rude. Yeah. Um, He's like, if you don't stop so yeah, this, I'm going to have to arrest you. He's like, that's what I want! <laughs> in his uh, basic, you know... What am I going to do? That's when he sees like a super rotted Jack wave him into the fabled porn theater Indeed. where they have their final discussion. It's so, just like four no, like, creepy dudes sorry. in the porn theater sitting Wait, there before he porn. does that, no, before he does that, he comes, he, he actually calls his sister calls on home. the yeah. payphone. Yeah, he calls home and tells her to be good and that he loves her and all this stuff. Basically like last goodbyes. And then he like takes the knife to like his wrist. He's going to like cut it with like a little pocket knife but he can't do it can't bring himself to go himself across to the street it. even though that's not how you do it uh so you know he eventually sees jack and then gets waved into the porn theater and funny thing about that the movie that plays on screen is a fake porno movie called it had to be next it's, wednesday because it's so funny like yeah it's the, called the see you next this, wednesday the supposed porn movie and there's boobs and stuff but, like, it just there keeps being these strange interruptions for no reason. Like, one guy walks in, he's just like, hey, what did I tell you about doing this kind of stuff? And the guy is just like, oh, but we've never had anything. that conversation. He's like, I don't even know you. And then the, the girl looks at him, she's like, I've never met you before. He's just like, oh, sorry. And then walks out of the room. <laughs> and then later, there's just, like, a phone call, and she answers the phone. She's just like, oh, like, no, you've got the wrong number. Sorry. And, like, that was the, this is just this strange interruptions for no reason. It's pretty hilarious <laughs> yeah so that's the fake porno uh see you next wednesday um it was see actually the week. first thing to be filmed in this movie the first the very first thing they ever filmed was the fake porno see you next wednesday you can see what john landis was looking forward to the most <laughs> so, you know, we, we gotta get to that and this is important stuff but uh no no i tease i kid it was actually pretty funny but that's where he's having the conversation with Jack and his other victims. The chase scene guy, he's there. He's like, look at me. I look like shit. It's because of you. It's like, sorry, man. He's like, no, <laughs> you made my no. wife a widow. I don't need to take this shit from a dead guy. He's like, undead. That's what we're here to tell you. You're trapping us all in limbo, and it sucks. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, and I, I got distracted earlier by the chase scene, or by the transformation scene, I should say, when you took off. But I meant to tell, 
uh, point out to the listeners again, like the, the, what the Wolfman did with exploring how is it just a guy going crazy or is it a real Wolfman? This does times 10 with all those crazy. Yeah, it definitely stuff. works on the crazy shit. And, yeah. and really uh, explores what it's doing to your subconscious because before it even turns you into werewolf, it's it, like a disease. It's already working on your body in another way. You know, it's 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 rotting his mind because when you become a werewolf, you're like losing yourself completely to that underlying subconscious of the werewolf, or you know your your lizard it's brain or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a rabies. Yeah, but I just like how much time they put into it. Like it was an hour. It's an hour before he turns into a werewolf. But they really explore that. That again, like the metamorphosis book and everything like that. They, I like how they do that. And it, what it does, it just gives you fever dreams for like th- until the full moon. Finally, like it, it's horrible. <laughs> Every time you fall yeah, asleep, no, the movie just, makes like, he dreams you of really people being go murdered. Three days. Yeah, it makes you dream of catching deer in the woods and eating them raw. Unless he really was. He was really no, he wasn't. Him deer. Okay, well, he you know, that's one still up in the air. Open to open for debate. That one, that's for sure. So what do the listeners think? Do you guys think that was a real deer? He wasn't hungry. Yeah, let us know in the comments. But I think that we've uh, perhaps. Well, no. Okay, so the story. Let's bring it to a close here. He goes full werewolf. We get to see this, and then. Other than all these, t- and it's a perfect way to cap it off, too. We get all these tense werewolf scenes from the one in the beginning where they kill Jack to the chase scene, all these kind of small, tense, quieter scenes. And then we get the chaos scene where the werewolf's just running amok through Piccadilly Circus. And there's cop cars and sirens everywhere because he just went crazy. He turned into a werewolf in the theater. And, uh, yeah, the lady comes out busting out. There's a mad, a mad thing, a dog. You have to do something. And she's just, like, trying to push the cops into the theater. And the cops are like, I don't want to go in the theater. And she's like, do something. It's pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, you know, it almost gets hit by a bus. Oh, yeah, they have the cops come to the theater and see all the dead bodies. And then he, like, shines a light on the werewolf. That's when he chases them out. And, and it's that's pandemonium too. Erupts. Like there's yeah, there's even people killing people. Like there's people getting run. Yeah, over no. Buses there's more and... people. More people die in motor vehicle accidents yeah. in this scene than are actually killed by the werewolf. Definitely, like, and it's eh. true pandemonium. It's great scene. Like, it's filmed really well. They had to, you know, direct a lot of actors in that scene. What was, but you know, what there's a lot of scenes like that in Blues Brothers too. John Landis has a talent for that. What are those like those puzzles that you like? You drop a ball and then it like turns into like a lever, and like a lever turns into a light bulb, and a light bulb turns into like a bunch of elastics. Like, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about? For that? Yeah, I do. There's the, there's a name for that. There's like a specific name for those type of they're, they're type they're called they're like a type of machine. Um, not like a perpetual motion machine. No, nothing those don't like exist. that. No. But well, when Murphy's looking that up, he the, the werewolf ends up running down a dark alley, and then again with the <sighs> questionable motivations of uh, what's her name again? Uh, Price. Price. Where's Price. Yeah. She yeah. walks down the alley towards the werewolf to tell him how much she loves him. And it's like, see, this that seems to me a bit of a nod to something that happens in Werewolf by Night, which we'll again talk about in a few minutes here. But, you know, she thinks she's going to be safe from him for because of love. And, you know, maybe perhaps her scent, which is uh, perhaps maybe more accurate. But, you know, it doesn't attack her right away. But then it goes to attack her. The cops all open fire. It, and when you they zoom out on that shot, it's just like, how did they not shoot her? Like, because there's her, there's the the werewolf lying on the ground, and somehow their bullets went like under her arms or something. 
I, I don't even know. I was gonna say the Brits are a crack shot. Like, the, okay, yeah, so that whole they don't have scopes or anything, in, and they're way down the alley. They're just like boom, boom, boom. And, yeah, yeah, they're like, the, and they're like it's like a 20, 30 second run for them to get down to the alley. Like, oh, first yeah. of all, the terrible line. She's able to push through two cops and knock over three, and just like run for it. That actually like, didn't work for me. That kind of took me out of it for a split second. I'm like, well, I, I agree. I agree. Hard to stop people from going towards the werewolf. Like, <laughs> yeah, like she goes down to be like, David, I love, I love you. you, and then it's yeah. like. Ah, and then they shoot it. it. Like, you know what would have made that scene way more impactful? Is if she's running and she's just yelling for David and David, like, she's trying to get to it. And then, like, the cops just hold her back and they just open fire on this werewolf. And she has like, to in watch. front of her. And she's, and she, she's like, no! Nah! And they're just like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, see, then, that would know. have been too cliche, I think. That's what lit. They, How would like, that would have been movie too cliche? That's too perfect. That would have been predicted. What you, That's what? what we would have predicted to happen. Like if if they had stopped her from running down that alley, we're like, That's oh, not we're what like, I would have oh, predicted to happen. Scared. That's what I thought of. That's not what I would have predicted to happen. That's what I thought of would have made the scene better after witnessing what actually did happen. Because what did happen was so unbelievable, it kind of ruined the movie a bit for me. And then it just ends. They shoot it. Him. Just ends, yeah. Just, just ends. like the Wolfman. Main yeah. character's dead, movie's over. Even more you know, than the Wolfman, it's just yeah. Fuck, fuck all of like the it's aftermath the that just bear witnessed, dead. and he's bolt full of bullet holes. Yeah, but you know, good news is nobody's stuck in limbo anymore. I mean, yeah, sure, nobody's stuck in in limbo anymore. But like, um, yeah, I it's it was it was a it was a quick and kind of messy ending. But yeah, I think honestly, if if she was held back and like there was gunfire happening and she had to wait, yeah, okay. and they just opened up. I don't know. That could maybe that would have been more. better. It would have been more predictable, I think, but maybe better. I don't know. I feel like that's a bit cliche, but perhaps not. Like we've seen that in movies before. It's like no, like you know, it's a King Kong thing. Oh wait, did I read King Kong? Rude Goldberg machine. That's what I was oh, okay. thinking of. It's called a Rude Goldberg machine. Where it's, right. you know, somebody drops the ball and it goes through a bunch of like random shit all to turn, like all for like a single match to light a candle. Like you'll watch a whole thing and it's just like the simplest little. All right, Murphy. We have to ask ourselves something here. Well, that was their, that was our plot storytelling. I forgot to click our little banner. But we got to scene... shave these down. Did you hold man. up? We got to shave these down. Well, we're both long-winded about <laughs> these things, it seems. Well, yeah, I know. We got to shave that down a bit. We got to figure that out. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, more for like two-hour episodes, not three-hour episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're just yeah. like, this is this is what I'm saying. Like, which scenes hold up? We'll start to break into scenes about what's going to hold up. And now we're going to basically rehash everything we just talked about. No, I this think is what quick, we need this, to do. This is meant to be a quick, just say your favorite scene. I mean, okay, sure. All right. Uh, the the scene that holds up without a doubt is the transformation scene, without a doubt. That's the best scene that holds up in the entire movie. It's the entire reason for the movie is to watch him transform into a werewolf slowly and painfully and terrifyingly, um, in every gruesome instant degree. Um, and then you know, as yeah. the movie goes on, the budget sh- shrinks and things go. But like that's the best scene. Yeah, well, I'll just add the chase scene to that. I agree with you. That was the best scene, but the chase scene is a close second for me. Characters, actors, there's hits and misses. It's not the strongest cast. I love everyone in that bar. Um, I mean, uh, I don't really love everyone in that bar. Like, they're all right character that? actors. Um, I would say... Uh, Nurse Price had the better delivery of lines uh but her character really falls apart by the end of it much like this movie so like she was strongly written in the beginning and then by the end of it she just becomes like foolish and like loses all sensibility and it's kind of like heartbreaking uh jack is probably the strongest character in the whole film because he manages to keep this like positive attitude and jokey attitude even though he's like essentially a rotting corpse of the soul so like he's he's 
probably the one string in this whole movie that keeps it kind of together. Yeah, I'm just going to agree with you on that one. It's Jack. It's definitely Jack. Yeah. I mean, the, the the price has some funny stuff. Like, would you like to watch some telly whilst I shower? Yeah. <laughs> She's got some funny lines. What do you think of the setting, aste- setting and aesthetic in this movie? I love the um, scene, like them creeping across the moors and stuff, and the bar is cool. The Piccadilly Circus is a good place for a chaos scene. I think that stuff was all pretty well. The porn theater, you know, all that stuff worked a lot really well for me. And if you yeah. count the aesthetic being the practical effects, then top notch. Top notch. Yeah, I mean, the practical effects were unmatched. There's a reason why it won awards. So, yeah, dude. It, it, it's a it's a very again it's a it's a jo- it's like an a typical looking John Landis film that just devolves into insane horror body horror to a degree that you would never expect from a John Landis film so you know you you go into this thinking it's a buddy comedy and it very much plays like that a very polished buddy comedy so yeah the, the aesthetic and stuff like that holds up uh, rewatchability you're gonna watch this one again no i don't need to watch it again like it's Not, it's you don't see that transformation scene again i could watch that transformation scene again on youtube if i really wanted to yeah. i don't need to sit through an hour and a half of a movie to watch that one scene um so no i wouldn't i would honestly wouldn't rewatch this movie again it's not it's not that greatly acted some of the character motivations kind of infuriate me um the effects are you know the really well done effects um but the, a lot of it is just effects for effects sake there's not a whole lot of gravitas behind some of the things that happen i find like there really wasn't any need for nazi werewolf nightmare shit like you know like i like that was the comedy stuff coming in that's what i'm saying like like we'll have an attack by werewolves you know? and somebody just was like what if they were nazi werewolves and they all had a good laugh and john lewis is like no no you're right yeah it's that's a nazi perfect werewolf. fever dream yeah. let's yeah, do yeah. more lsd guys let's think of like that's yeah okay sure john landis do more cocaine and come up with wacky shit like that well i don't know i feel like this movie needed to pick a lane and it was so in the middle between like comedy and horror that I never felt terrified watching any of the horror scenes. I, I could have like, done with less comedy as well because I found the horror stuff worked really well, and I could have used a bit more of it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I have to answer this with the caveat that I have seen it before, so this is a rewatch for me. But I wouldn't be in a rush as well to rewatch this one, and I don't think it's necessary. Well, see, we we labeled the Wolfman a must watch. But well, this again, one if you're, is if as you're well. Gonna like, do... You have to see no, that transformation is. scene once, and everything that leads yeah. up to it. So yeah, like it's, it's it's a movie you can play in the background of a party and not really need to pay attention to. Um, we almost need another and, category: yeah. rewatchability or must watchability, <laughs> or no watchability. <laughs> but uh, that sort of yeah. Um, I guess that's so, what we yeah. does it hold up. Um, no, I don't think it does hold up. I really don't. I don't think like as a movie as a whole, I don't believe it holds up. There, there are are really cool scenes that do hold up in the movie. Uh, but as a whole, from beginning to end, no, this is not that great of a film. Like there's, there's some pretty lazy writing portions. There's some that are actually kind of annoying. Um, and if for a minute and 37 or an hour and 37 minute film, it felt way longer than that. So no, I don't think it holds up. It did feel long and that's why I would dock it some in the rewatchability. But I think it does hold up because I think if it's your first time watching it, um, I think it'll have a, an effect on you. It did. It I did mean, yeah. You. If you're first time it, watching it and you have no idea about it whatsoever, then yeah, it's gonna scar and hold and, and do something to you. But yeah, 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna say know. it does. I'm gonna say it does. I'm maybe just got my rose colored glasses on because I love Halloween, but uh, Halloween movies in horror movies, these old style ones, have a special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh,